legend of Frankenstein is known throughout the world, as recorded by Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley in her classic novel. How more than two centuries ago, a scientist named Victor Frankenstein created from corpses and brought to life an immortal monster. But the story of Frankenstein was just the beginning. There have been others, some bearing the Frankenstein name, who have followed in Victor's unorthodox footsteps. There are many tales of Frankenstein. These are some of them. And to remember my Liebling Gregor, so as not to repeat the mistake of your infamous ancestor, follow my instructions. If my theory and technique are correct, the brain, once transplanted and reactivated, should retain all the memories, skills, and feelings of its former owner. I remain your colleague. Dr. Yama Reichman. Dr. Yama Reichman. The frog of Frankenstein, the other children call me. My teacher, Master Thomas, a self-styled man of faith told me that I was born with this twisted body because of your sin, Cousin Victor, because of what you did a century ago. But not this time. No murders, no revenge, no horror. In addition to your notes, I also have Hermes. When my... My Adonis awakens and takes his first breath. They will see that basically you are right. And respect the name of Frankenstein once again. There's only one vital component that is lacking. <laughs> Just one. Good. 
Again, Dr. Frankenstein. I appreciate your regarding my knowledge, skills, experience, and reputation concerning the human brain with such high esteem. Please continue our correspondence. For now, I remain your colleague and friend, Dr. Irma Reichmann. My liebling Gregor, your self-description reads so incongruous with the beauty of your written words. If only we could meet, but my health precludes that from happening. Ugh. Pagel, the cancer has taken its toll. If only circumstances had been different, we might have shared a love, one of mind more than body. But fate can be capricious and cruel. I have already taken measures to ensure that my one properly functioning organ be filled to you. Study it. Use it. If you need to, experiment with it. In that way, we will remain together. Goodbye for now, thy needling Irma. I love you too. Yes, husband. What? You say you have it? I'll be right over. Sorry, Dr. Frankenstein. Prompt as always. Are you sure it is him? And sweet as a summer's apple, so to speak. Nothing like a good apple, I say, at least why so the worms get at it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Professor Hans Brudacher, how well I remember the day you booted me out of the university for my ideas. Heresy, blasphemy, you called them. Ugh. Smartest man in Bavaria. So they tell me, of present company excluded. Yeah. Kicked the bucket just this morning after his first class, right there on the stairs. What is it, Bray? Bad ticker. Never came close to bumping the old noggin on his way down. Air Frankenstein. Sorry, I'm not as rich as my late cousin. I can see this here one's special. And you know the risks have been taken for the likes of you. So, as they say, business before pleasure. Oh. 
How's business? Like always, Gertrude. Good evening, my hearts. Good evening. You should pick me. You should take both of us. Pretty proud to keep you warm tonight. Helga! My beautiful, my beautiful Helga. Fräulein Helga. No, 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 no. What's wrong with you? Come back tomorrow, Oh, my marks Maybe. are good. Huh? I don't care too don't much touch about me. you. Don't touch me! Don't you touch her! Yes, you fall idiot! Death! Death! Ah! Ah! Come on! Ah! now as ugly as the monster you created, Cousin Victor. But that should not matter to my armor, who loves me for my brain. I am sorry, my Adonis. You have waited a long time. You can wait a while longer. Und remember, mein Liebling Gregor, the brain, once transplanted and reactivated, should retain all the memories, skills, and feelings of its former owner. The feelings, feelings, feelings. What is it, Al? I'm assuming you haven't heard, Dr. 
Frankenstein. Heard what? Speak up, man. It's the music of the night. Nasty fire at the music hall during a rehearsal. So hot, it melted the door locks. Poor babies. They must regret their decision to leave Paris. Well, except for what got burned, none of them too hard on the eyes. Unless, of course, one's picky. Well, there are one or two exceptions. See anything that strikes your fancy? Or shall I just Christmas wrap the lot of them? My dearest Irma, guide me and pray that when she wakes up to a perfect body, that I've created the body of Venus, that she still remembers. If only circumstances had been different, we might have shared a love. One of mind more than body. Oh, 
Kirk the vocal cords. They won't function for a while. They need time to heal. You're young again. Perfect in every way. What is it? The scars? Don't worry. It won't be long until they heal also. I've seen to that. Bermond, don't you know me? It's... it's... it's Gregor. I, I don't understand. The brain should be functioning perfectly. Recognize me, Makarma? You do recognize me. Oh. My love. Oh. 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 Gregor, mein Liebling. Your vocal cords will heal, as will your scarves. Just give time. My beloved.
the gray death. It's the plague that rots the flesh. Should you really be doing that? No, please, Sylvie. Don't lecture me anymore. This is everything I need to I calm know, my nerves. I know, Elsa, but it's just the thought of my skin turning gray and I withering. Know. I, just... I know. Oh, forgive us, oh. Frankenstein. Oh, we, we didn't mean him. Oh, it's all right. I learned to cope with tragedy. Oh, as have I. And still no cure. I wonder if our village will ever be rid of the curse. Bef yes, before it puts us all in our graves. My husband's head is carried by the wind. Oh, well, no matter what the cause is, one can't be too careful. Every night when I go to bed with the dread that when I awaken in the morning beside my dear claws. Or, or look into the mirror. Oh. Well, I must be off now. I've got my chores to do. Well, we'll see you later, Frau Frankenstein, at, at, the, at the funeral. Yeah, so we'll be there for you. Good day, Frau Frankenstein. Good day. Hello? Who? Oh, hello, Vincent. I wish to express my condolences, Frau Frankenstein, for your loss. Danke. I know that you and my late husband weren't exactly friends, but I... Uh, that's not my main reason for calling. It's about the ring. The ring? You want to buy it? With all due respect, Frau Frankenstein, your husband has no further use for it. And I, on the other hand, will just name your figure. I I'm sorry, Vincent, but the ring is not for sale at any cost. You see, it was Helmut's request that we... You did what? already. No need to wake the dead. Although that is an intriguing idea. Hmm. Who is it? It is I, Vincent. Ah, Vincent. Come in, come in. Mm -hmm. Come to see my latest treasure, huh? Smuggled in from South America just three days ago. Handsome, isn't he? Uh, wasn't he? <laughs> But I must say, he's looking a mite better than you of late. What's the matter, my friend? Johann, I've come to speak with you about a matter of grave importance. Grave? I'm interested. Which calls for a libation. Here we are, my friend. The best Amontillado that Franks can buy. It will do you good. Put some color back in those cheeks. Although I dare say you look like you could benefit also from a thick steak and potatoes. Just wine. Thank you. Then 
Now, my friend, perhaps you can explain this pale countenance and those trembling hands. You look like you've seen a ghost. No ghost. Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Oh, you mean your former neighbor, not the monster that his famous ancestor is supposed to have stitched together. But Herr Frankenstein lies moldering in his grave. At least last I heard he was. What I must, what I'm compelled to tell you begins when Herr Frankenstein was very much alive. Alive, despised, and feared. Herr Frankenstein, my neighbor, was a fiend. Oh, how he enjoyed taunting me, tormenting me. He knew all about my obsession for precious jewels, for possessing them. He wore a ring with the most magnificent jewel my eyes have ever beheld. It was something I had to own for myself. And though I was willing to pay well for that ring, Herr Frankenstein would not sell it to me for any price. Frankenstein knew how not owning the ring haunted me day and night. But fate was about to intervene. As you know, people feared Herr Frankenstein. Feared he might be conducting diabolic experiments like his forebear. But this Frankenstein had no interest in creating monsters. Must you always taunt our poor neighbor, Helmut? Vincent means no harm. Vincent is an idiot. What with all his precious jewels, everyone in this town is an idiot. My God, I wish we had never left Geneva. You've forgotten already, husband, that we didn't leave by choice. <laughs> Idiots are everywhere. All right, forget about Vincent. It's you I'm worried about. Are you really concerned that I'll outlive you? Concerned you'll never get to spend that incredible fortune you married me for? That I'll get strong and vigorous and stay that way forever? Victor was right in studying the ancient alchemists, as well as men of science, Paracelsus, Agrippa, Dippel, men who saw the gift that Victor Frankenstein stumbled upon accidentally and bestowed upon his so-called monster. I've rediscovered that secret, Lenore. I've extracted it, defined it, isolated it, all from Victor's notes. But you can't be serious about trying this concoction on yourself. It might have the opposite effect, and... I'm touched by your concern, Lenore. So maybe after I've become young and immortal, I'll share this gift with you. But don't worry. I have tested it again and again on small animals with comparatively short lifespans. And I assure you, there is absolutely nothing that can possibly go wrong. <laughs> yes! I can feel it already. In every blood vessel, muscle, nerve. I feel... How much? I feel... Ah. Please, no. Helmut. Please, no. Oh, my God, Helmut. The great death.
May you rest in peace. Furthermore... He's all yours now, Frau Frankenstein. Thank you. <clears throat> Furthermore, while Herr Frankenstein's ways were a little different, he was still a child of God, who I pray will have mercy upon his immortal soul. Thankful you almost were. Oh, thank you uh, for coming. If you need anything. Father. May God protect you, Frau Frankenstein. So there Herr Frankenstein lies, and still on his finger the damnable ring with the blood red ruby. That's become my curse and driven me to the brink of madness. And you want that ring? It's the only way I'll ever know peace again. You'll help me, won't you, Johan? I don't think I could do it myself. I don't have the stomach for it. But you have. Well, I, I have a shovel, but robbing a grave? I admit that would be a new experience even for me, but it's been almost a week, and remember the plague. We'll take precautions. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Vincent. Um, I'm a collector, not a body snatcher. But uh, have fun. You know, I wonder which worked quicker, the plague or the worms? <laughs> Buried alive. Interesting. Unless, of course, Herr Frankenstein's potion actually worked. I heard his heartbeat. It was maddening. <laughs> Probably your imagination. Or your guilty conscience. But such strength, that was no imagination. It was superhuman. Supernatural. 
Well, I, I thank you for your generous gift, old friend. You know, I once almost acquired an authentic hand of glory back when I lived in Arkham. But those pesky government officials, uh, they don't always appreciate such treasures. Don't let it touch your bare skin. Oh, of course. No, I plan to preserve it and uh, display it under glass. So, now that Herr Frankenstein's wonder drug seems to have run its course, let's celebrate. Oh, if you don't mind it, it's morning. I should be on my way. I understand you want to get home. Admire your prize, perhaps pose with it in front of the mirror, huh? As one collector to another, I understand perfectly. going to put you, my lovely. Never torment me again. You hear me? You stinking, fetid mass of pestilence. I'm sorry. Did you say something? Just talking to myself. A stupid habit I must overcome. Good evening, Frau Frankenstein. Good evening. May I? Mm. to pay your respects, I see. I come to visit my dear Helmut every day. I prefer coming here at night. It's more quiet. But what are you doing here at this hour? It's almost closing time. I, uh... But since you're here, I'd like to apologize for my late husband's behavior towards you. It was... Rude and uncalled for. It was nothing, Frau Frankenstein. You know, I really did love Helmut. Oh, his brilliant mind. I'm sure you know by now the tragic news about your friend. Johan? Oh, so you don't know. I'm sorry. It appears as though it wasn't just the pestilence that claimed your friend's life. There were marks on the throat, finger marks, as if strangled by the hand possessing great strength.
I gladly give it back, but... Speak again the immortal tale, Frankenstein. Be warned, you doctors and scientists who come after me. Be warned that man must not experiment with the secrets of life. This creature will live. You're trying to play God, Victor. It's heresy. It's science. He's hideous. Yes, he's hideous. Have you any idea what kind of horror you've let loose in England? Put that knife down, Professor! No, I can't let... Ooh! Uh, oh, he's got me in the clutch of his hand! Uh, now, what do you expect of me? A companion. A woman. Of the same species. One who will be my friend. This being you must create. No, I'm not doing it. God damn it! It was a heck of a time for my engine to conk out. There I was, stuck in the middle of nowhere, about to get drowned in Uncle Noah's next flood. Already the lightning bolts were crashing overhead like hopped up eels at an electrician's convention. But I suppose it could be worse. A fine kettle of gefilte for me, Jack Anvil, enemy of criminals, hopheads, and other lowlifes, faded to die of pneumonia like some skid row bomb instead of a more respectable way, like at the business end of some Gunzel's 45. I doubted I'd find a mechanic at this time of night out here in the boondocks. But if I could just get to a phone before the storm clouds opened up. Hello? Hello? The setup seemed familiar. I recalled similar situations that Lamont Cranston and Sam Spade found themselves in on the radio. Well, if it was good enough for them, at least the outside looked friendly enough. How oh, may I help you? Where'd they find you? Central casting? Hey, sorry to bother you so late, but my jalopy's engine died. That storm's about to break any second. Wait here. I will speak with the owner of the house. Perhaps 
you may stay the night. Didn't this guy know Halloween was over? I felt like I was one of the East Side kids about to meet Bella Lugosi. Hey, can I just use your phone? Maybe there's a local gas station. I'm sorry, sir. But the phone... is dead. But if you will wait here... At least he didn't say, walk this way. Can't be too careful. Fagalas, you know. Yeah, there's plenty around here. So much to steal. Obviously, this dump hadn't been attended to in decades. It was sorely in need of a woman's touch. Any woman, even Lady Macbeth. Well, at least the joint was dry and warm. I just hoped things wouldn't get too hot. Please, make yourself comfortable. The doctor will be with you. Personally. Doctor, huh? Uh, thanks, Jeeves. Uh, Wana? Ungawa? The name is Mo Gambo. Sir. Sorry. Oh, Gambo. Where's Larry and Shemp? I couldn't help but notice the painting. Maybe of Dr. Jekyll during his college days. I wonder if the doctor was spying on me through the portrait, with eyes that would follow me wherever I walked inside this mausoleum. My hat. Thank you. It's very nice. Cigarette? I'm trying to stop. I heard those things could kill you. 
Did I say something about a woman's touch? Like maybe Charlie Chan's number one, two, and three daughters? You need something warm in your stomach, kind sir. After being outside in the cold, will I see to your needs? I need to be warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> it is oolong tea from our homeland. Very, very hot. Yes, you are. <laughs> but the tea. T is <laughs> Miss uh, Miss Anime, Anali, Anali. Oh, arigato. Uh. Very good, very good. How can I refuse an offer from silky skirts like these? Besides, the China dolls obviously one for me. I mean, don't all dames. And so. Oh. <laughs> Women like men with brains. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, Who's this guy, the, uh, the doctor's granddaddy? <laughs> what kind of herbs did you say was in this? Oolong. Oolong. The tea felt soothing as it went down the hatch. Also strange. And I wondered if somebody might have slipped me a Mickey. Say, babies, what do you say? Once this storm lets up, the four of us slip out for some chup suey. I know this place in Chinatown. Guys, uh, who is this guy again? You admire fine works of art? Yeah, you could say that. That portrait is one of my most prized possessions. You know who that is? What is this, 20 questions? Give me a hand. Dorian Gray's second cousin, once removed. The guy reminded me of Boris Karloff. Somehow. As I started to get drowsy, I was getting the feeling that I was about to be removed. That's Victor Frankenstein, one of the most brilliant scientists the world has ever known, and a great inspiration to me. Not so. I was thought Frankenstein was just some guy in the movies who got mixed up with Abbott Costello. I'm told I bear a striking resemblance to Victor. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Anvil? Jack Anvil, PI, at your service. Mr. Mortality, Dr. Mortality, at your service, Mr. Anvil. I didn't like the sound of that name, Mortality. It reminded me of death and that map of his like some loony from the pages of black mask or weird tales but at that moment what i thought of this bargain basement karloff didn't seem to matter Is he the one? The one you've been waiting for? Waiting so long for? My dearest? Dearest. You three. You're with this creep? All three? Yes, 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 my lovelies. 
He'll do just nicely. Nicely? Do what nicely? Something wasn't right with this setup. I knew that, rain or not, I had to make a beeline out of here. Just a few well-aimed shots with my licensed 38 snub nose, and I'd be free and out of this madhouse. But Mr. Michael Finn had already done his <laughs> dirty work. You can't escape, Mr. Anvil. The drug that enemy gave you will immobilize you for hours. That'll give me just enough time to perform the operation. Agambo, it's time. As you wish. Although I couldn't move, the gray matter in my noggin still worked like gangbusters. Besides, the dolls seemed to be on my team. Maybe they'd grab my heat and bail me out of this insane asylum. Yeah, maybe. So, maybe the China Dolls didn't go for me as much as I thought. It wasn't the first time my hunch was a little bit off, or I'd been given a double cross by some good looking dame. But I was getting the sneaky suspicion that this might be the last. I was beginning to wonder if this craziness was just a nightmare. The result of that pastrami sandwich and dill pickle that cute waitress served me back at the diner. But if that was the case, Jack Anvil, private gumshoe, wasn't laughing. finally starting to get it. That crazy as this seemed, this was no gosh darn joke. You're wasting your time, Mr. Mr. Anvil. But uh, I suppose you're entitled to an explanation. Gargantus was a gift from Ogambo's tribe. I see that my pet likes you, but I must apologize for his uncouth behavior. I think he's hungry, and I've been too busy the last few hours to feed my little pet. Little pet? More like King Kong's big brat. If I ever needed an assist from Clyde Beatty, this was it. I hope that what they said about gorillas being vegetarians was true. But after he's fed, he's really quite harmless. I do hope you like Gargantus as much as he likes you, because Gargantus is going to be your new home. Victor Frankenstein, whose portrait you so admired, once created a living human being by assembling parts of corpses and then bringing it alive. It's come to be known as Frankenstein's monster. Simply put, Mr. N. I'm going to remove your brain, your living brain, and transfer it into the head of my ape. After the operation, you're going to be neither man nor ape, but my creation, mine, capable of human thoughts and reasoning, but with the strength and power of a Hercules. Oh, 
with scientific knowledge that we're going to glean from this experiment. Don't worry, Mr. Anvil. I'll be merciful. You'll sleep soundly, painlessly, mercifully, but only for a while. The guy was section eight, but the reason for his nuttiness wasn't my problem. There I was, like some poor stiff in a mortuary waiting for the undertaker to go to work. Pleasant dreams, hmm? And then the world disappeared. I may have dreamed of the three Annas, maybe more. All of us marooned on some remote island, with them all decked out like Maria Montez or Dottie Lamour. Hi, Jack. And me, the only guy around for thousands of miles. All dreams, especially the best ones, can turn into nightmares. When I finally woke up, I wasn't paralyzed anymore. But moving wasn't easy, as if I'd put on weight like some fat so let loose in an all-you-can-eat bakery. My head ached. There was an empty rumbling in my gut, reminding me of the gunfire I heard in Normandy back in 44. Then I remembered every confounded gosh darn detail. I felt like I needed a haircut and I was hungry. And so was Gargantus. It also finally sunk in that those Anababes really didn't have a thing for me after all. But what did they see in Dr. Mortality? Guess I will never understand the opposites for gender. Or should that be species? Yeah, I was hungry, or Gargantus was. Maybe the food wasn't a brown derby T-bone. Somehow, I was like a starving man at a free smorgasbord. And yeah, I'd become vegetarian. And you know, as long as Dr. Mortality and his loony crew continued to feed me and occasionally clean out my mess. What more can any ape, human brain or not, ask for? So as far as Jack Anvil, former P.I., was concerned, the case of the madhouse of death was closed. But only one thing I still couldn't understand. Those three China dolls, they really were that creep's girlfriends? Heck. I should have got more chummy with that waitress back at the diner. I knew she liked me.
I call upon you, Victor Frankenstein. Let your immortal spirit guide my hands. As I can, Adelina. Babysitting the dead. Make that undead. Wine, our best, and two glasses. Coming right up, Karina. Can I get you gentlemen anything else to drink? Oh, well, maybe a couple. Claudio, only drinks are for sale tonight. Tomorrow night? Guess you have to come back to find out. <laughs> mm, just be wary of. I can handle him. And your name is Karnstein. Dr. Heinrich Karnstein. Your family once lived in Switzerland. But I spent most of my youth in England, where I performed all my research. Welcome to Transylvania, Doc. Hmm. I prefer doctor, if you don't mind, Carl. Uh, Funny money, Doc? Please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, thanks, doctor. Good night. Good night, Ray. Come back soon. I will. You can be sure. Please, Carl. We'll have the bottle, thank you. Thank you, kind sir. Ah, uh, Karnstein. Dr. Karnstein. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. I was miles away. I was thinking what a wonderful province you have here. Mountains, rivers, forest, but above all, you have opportunity. Yeah, I've lived here all my life, and I have yet to see one, as, as you put it, opportunity. Or someday, I hope to escape to America. I mean, the, the music, and I think the girls there are called chicks. And they're more uh, friendly than some of our girls. <sighs> Shall we replenish? And you believe dressing up as that mumbling American film actor will help you get there? Or at least catch the eye of a pretty barmaid, hmm? I mean, it can't hurt. Besides, I like the, uh, the feel of these threads. Imported, used from the States. Tell me, Carl, the castle I saw on my way to the village this afternoon, might you know if it's for purchase? Probably is, but you'll have to talk to the mayor. Nobody's lived in that ancient dump for over a hundred years, and nobody even goes near it. Too many old rumors. Perfect. Splendid. You're not thinking of buying that old eyesore? Mm. 
Replenish. To think the locals say this place was once home to a den of vampires. <laughs> Very hard to believe. I mean, we're not living in 19th century Transylvania. You see, my friend, I deal only in fact, not idiotic superstition. You know, some uh, idiots still believe like the old legends and they refuse to go near this place. Good. Then they won't pester me when I work, will they? The doctor, you still haven't told me what kind of work. Carl? Have you ever heard of the name Victor Frankenstein? Frankenstein, of course. Who has it? Like uh, the old Hollywood films, right? Hmm. Victor Frankenstein was more than just a character from old films. He was a real person who actually existed. And he had a wondrous dream. A dream less enlightened people might call insanity to steal from nature her most precious secret, the secret of eternal life. Victor Frankenstein created a living man, a body he made piece by piece from corpses he acquired from the graveyards, the mall, slaughterhouse, wherever he could find it. Come on, you don't really believe that, do you? <laughs> As will you, Carl, when in this very room, I create Victor Frankenstein's great experiment again. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Is it, Carl? Is it crazy? My family name was once Frankenstein, modified by an ancestor to avoid the stigma. Is it crazy my mother and father went to their grave fearing their only son would be tainted by the Frankenstein gene? A gene that crops up every generation or so among members of the Frankenstein bloodline. You see, over the years, I've collected copies of Victor Frankenstein's notes, some from the British Museum. By combining his ideas with my own techniques, including atomic energy, I intend to create my own living man. But you see, unlike Frankenstein's so-called monster, one totally dominated by my will, the perfect superhuman slave. Well, Carl, now what do you say? <sighs> Like I said before, you're cracked. Hey, you're completely wacko. Our last of this vintage. I'm sorry. And alas, this will have to be our final drink of the evening. Dorina, isn't it? It is, yes. Beautiful name. Thank you. Okay, well, you boys enjoy. You. You're going to rob graves? Hey, don't worry, doctor. No other customers to overhear you past sunset. We come. We are going to rob graves. Yeah, now I know you're nuts. I ain't stealing no bodies. I ain't no body snitcher. Now, the word is snatcher, Carl. I've learned a lot about you since my arrival in Transylvania. I know you need money. I know you do almost anything to get away from this backward province, to go someplace where you could enjoy success, fortune, and perhaps the finer things in life, if you had money. Besides, I need an assistant. I'm listening. 
Once our experiment is completed and I publish, you, Carl, will share in all the glory. Imagine what an impression you make on those barmaids and all those American chicks, as you say. Especially if you had the money, the notoriety. Well, my friend, colleague, are you with me? Replenish. What if somebody sees us? Who, Carl? All the townspeople hiding in their homes from vampires? I don't think so. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but something doesn't feel right Quit here. Quit whining and get on with it. What are you doing here? Who might you be, sir, visiting a cemetery at this late hour? The caretaker of these sanctified grounds, if it's any of your business. More important, don't you know where you are? Yes, in a musty tomb in an old graveyard. What else is there to know? This isn't just any graveyard. Its ground is hallowed. Sanctified long ago. Don't you understand? This is where it all began. What are you doing? What are you... You... You're robbing graves. He's, he's one thing, but... But you were a doctor. A murderer. And you are an accessory, Carl. Your fingerprints are on the murder weapon. I suggest you remember that. And if you need further persuasion, I assure you my marksmanship is impeccable. Now, shall we get back to work? The hinges are rusted. We won't need the crowbar. Such preservation. Then it's true, what I've read about the soil. And from the age of this coffin and the clothing, this fellow must have been here for a long time. But this body, this body wasn't buried in the ground. This dirt inside the coffin you fall, obviously enough to do its work. You know what the villagers would say about this? Utter rubbish. Now, will you help me get on with this?
I don't get what's so cool about this. About what, Carl? This. Seems like regular dirt to me. Well, I'm afraid a geological analysis will have to wait its turn. As did Victor Frankenstein, we'll use only the best, most appropriate parts. Strongest arms, most powerful torso, and so forth. Well, what are you just standing there for, boy? We've much work to do. Careful with that, Carl. If there's any damage and I have to send to London for replacement, it will set our work back considerably. Those vintage pieces are irreplaceable, you know. Can I get you something, another, Yes, in the dead of night. Speak Another truck bringing more machines up to that damn castle. Machines probably built by Lucifer himself. What's going on, Adelina? I've never seen men like this before. Do they really believe in, you know, like in this day and age? <laughs> I mean, I may not believe in them, but I'm afraid of them. I say we've wasted enough time. Who's this Dr. Kronstein, anyway? That name? Wasn't there a vampire named Kronstein? And what does he need with all those damn machines? Maybe they're building an atomic bomb. Oh, no. I don't think so. No. There is more than you. What is it, Miklos? The cemetery gate. The chain and lock broken. Broken? Wait a minute. When was the last time anybody saw the caretaker? Ah. I haven't seen Radu in weeks. It's not like Radu to miss having a beer or two each Saturday afternoon. Oh, I miss Radu. Yeah. Um, he dipped well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this, do you recognize it? You should, where'd you find it? Uh, should you take us there? Come, let's go. Wait, wait, you, you may need my help, the Lord's help. Namni Patri, in Filio, Spiritus Santu. Amen. 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 Got to hand it to you, Doc. But even though I don't really approve of what you're doing, you've done a very cool job. 
Time to replenish. No, Carl. We have done a very cool job. But your contribution to this project is far from over yet. You see, I need one more important component for my creation. Surely, one of those stiffs must have... No! The brain needs to be fresh, healthy. The brain of someone recently dead. How are you gonna... No. I won't be involved in another murder. You won't have to be, Carl. At least not in the way you think. It's no good trying to move, Carl. The bullet lodged in your spine. You're paralyzed. But don't worry, I won't let you die. Not yet, anyway. Why? I no longer need your assistance, Carl. But your brain, your brain is another matter. The gray matter, you might say. Doctor. Doctor. I trust the morphine helps, Carl. Don't worry now, you won't feel a thing. Stein moves into a place our village has shunned for years. And now the cemetery violated. Graves open. Tombs desecrated. The bodies, God knows where. Sorry, Father Flask. Yeah. And now poor Radu, murdered. We can't go to the police or the security with just that. We do what our forefathers did. Constein moved into a castle once occupied by the undead. Tonight is a full moon. It's said that a full moon can revive the undead, even after they've been put to rest. Aye, that's what the legends say. There's one tonight. Maybe this Dr. Constein is one of those foul creatures. Yes, I say he's a vampire. Well, we know how to deal with them. No, that would be murder, a grave sin. Our forebears did not take such blasphemous steps. An archbishop consecrated the ground. What if it's been unsanctified? Desecrated. No, I, I I can't condone this. I can't be a part of it. We'll discuss it later, Father, in a confessional. Yeah. Say I'm crazy, but I can't miss this. Ladies, take over for me. She's not leaving me behind. Well, me neither.
Bad slave. You live. <laughs> now, can you talk? Go on. Try. Acknowledge your master. Constein. <laughs> Dark. Carl. You remember? Remember. Understand. your master you must protect me from them do you understand kill them was soon lost in darkness and distance.